Hello. Before we do our lesson on aseptic technique, I thought it might be useful to give you a few do's and don'ts and other tips that will help you be more successful with aseptic technique. We have to keep in mind that microorganisms are everywhere and when we're working with them in the lab, we need to keep kind of in the back of our mind that it's always raining microorganisms. Mold spores, bacteria, these are on dust particles being pulled down by gravity. We're shedding microorganisms from our body, from our clothes, and these are all waiting to contaminate our culture tubes or our petri plates. Now for doing transfer, we normally use a sterile inoculating loop. And the inoculating loop is a handle uh, that has a wire that terminates in a loop on the end. And before we can put that into any bacteria to remove them or to do any sterile transfers, we need to sterilize the loop. We used to use Bunsen burners for this, but most of the time today we use back to incinerators like you see here. And you'll notice it's glowing orange inside. So what we do is we take our loop and we put it all the way in until the beginning of the handle is just where the orange part is and we leave it in for a full 10 seconds. And then it's sterile. Now again, we can't shortchange that. We have to make sure it's a full 10 seconds. If you get careless or don't count and you're only doing it three or four seconds, you may not kill all the bacteria on the loop. And at that point then you could cross contaminate uh, your various tubes or plates and even contaminate the stock cultures that the other students are going to be using them. So again, it's important that we sterilize the loop for a full 10 seconds. Another important thing is not to leave it in there unattended like that to sterilize it. That gets very hot. That can heat the handle so much that you could burn yourself and it can even melt the metal of the handle. So again, when you're putting it in there for your 10 seconds, make sure you're holding it in your hand. And again, give it the full 10 seconds. Another important tip is how to remove the caps of the various culture tubes we're using to avoid contaminating the cap or contaminating the tube or the contents of the tube. When we do aseptic technique, we're going to be holding the inoculating loop in our dominant hand and holding the tube that we're going to be using in our other hand. Now one very important caution, whenever we are handling tubes, we always pick them up by the glass, not by the cap. The caps could fall off. Sometimes they're rather loose. And if the cap is loose and you pick it up by the cap, the tube could drop out, fall, break, and contaminate your whole work area. So always pick the tubes up by the glass, never by the caps. Now it's important that we don't leave the tubes open any longer than necessary, only long enough to either get the bacteria out of the pure culture or into the tube we want to grow it in. The longer we leave the cap off of a tube or the longer we leave the lid off of a petri plate, the greater chance contaminants are going to fall in and contaminate our cultures. So again, we pick up the tube we're going to be using by the glass. We're going to remove the cap with the little finger of the loop hand. We simply wrap the little finger around the cap and pull it off like that. Now this keeps the cap facing downward so airborne microbes can't fall in. We never set the cap down because that can contaminate it and leave the tube exposed for a longer period of time. So we simply grab the cap with the little finger of the loop hand, pull it off, and it's out of the way and we can easily put our loop in. Now when we're doing this for real, once we remove the cap, we do what's called flaming the tube. This goes back to when we used to use Bunsen burners for aseptic technique and we'd put the tube in a flame. What we do after we remove the cap is that we put the opening of the tube against the back to incinerator. We leave it there for three seconds. What that does is temporarily heat the glass in the air, warm air rises, and microorganisms can't fall in from the air as easily. Then we take out the bacteria or put in the bacteria or do whatever procedure we're doing. And then before we put the cap on, we flame the tube again. So again, when we're ready to say remove bacteria from a pure culture like this E. coli, we would remove the cap with a little finger, flame the tube, take out the bacteria with our sterile loop, 
flame the tube and put the cap back on. And then when we do our inoculations, we do the same thing. We have bacteria in the loop. We're going to put it into the tube, so we remove the cap, flame the tube, put the bacteria in, flame the tube, and put the cap back on. So notice the tube is only open long enough to get the bacteria out and to put the bacteria in. And of course, when we're all done, there's still lots of bacteria on our loop. We're going to stick that back in the back to incinerator for 10 seconds to sterilize the loop again.